Good morning, uh, ninth grade. I am going to go back and do a problem from yesterday. I had a request for problem number eight to be explained, and it's just like today's lesson, so I will uh, do that for you. Um, you have, you're, 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 you're reducing, if you want to use simple terms, you're extracting the square root is what you're doing. Um, it's just an, a rationalizing denominators is the title, but you're just working, breaking them down. So on well, number eight is like, similar to what you did today's lesson, but you had six X squared and two X squared. And so the way you do that one is it's difficult to break this down. So you just put a radical sign over both of them, put them all inside one box. And when you do that, that allows you to square the bottom one into the top one. So you got X, single X, and here you got double X. Two are going to six three times. And because this is single X and this is double X, you can, this whole two X can divide into a three times, three X. So that reduces down or rationalizes out to radicand sign three X. This is your answer for that problem. So if you see how I did this, I put them together under one. Um, this step here, if you want to do that in your mind, that's fine with me. But basically, you can take a 2x into the 6x. The reason you can do that, again, if I can repeat myself, is because of the x squared and the single x here. If it's not double like that, you can't do it. But this one, you can. So that's a little bit of a tricky one. All right, on 9.4 today, I will move over and talk about that one. How's that? Can you see my board? I'm afraid you can see me too. Well, that's what you want, no? Uh-oh, I'm going to have to tell you a few answers here. Well, let's get started with number one. What you're going to do today is break these apart. And, and you will need to multiply them to get them to the smallest terms. So for this one here, you look at your, always look at your bottom number, it's five squared. And if you multiply any of these numbers by one, you get the same answer. So you can multiply them by 10. If you do the bottom one, the same as the top one, it doesn't change it. Um, let me think how to say this. If you, if you would be doing fractions, you would see it as, as, as instead of reducing the fraction, you would be enlarging the fraction. So, so if you have one half and you multiply it by three, you just simply have three on top and six on the bottom. So that's the way you do here to be able to reduce it back down. So for the first one, five, you, you said that's not a perfect square, but if you multiply it times five, it becomes a perfect square. So you have to do that to the top as well. So five times five equals 25. And then five times four equals four radicand five. And you say, well, I'm not reducing it. Well, yes, you are. I'm, I'm not getting less, I'm getting more. Well, in reality, you're getting less, or so you're getting it condensed. And so now you can square this here, five. This is square of five. So you have five, four, radicand five. This is your answer right here. And sometimes you don't know if they are all the way reduced. And that's a little bit difficult. You may stop in the middle and you could go farther. Uh, I don't know how to tell you, but if this number here is down to five, uh, you're, you're safe. But number two doesn't work that way. You have 26 over two squared, and so you want to square this number here, so I use two. Always to know what to multiply it by, I put the big old dot there, because that helps you see what we're doing, we're multiplying. Always look at this number here and say, what do I have to multiply this by to get it squared? So two times two is going to be squared. So you go two times two, makes you four. Two times 26, makes you 26, two. And this number here can be squared, which I just moved on back here. It's the square of four is two. You can drop your radicand sign, and you can't do any, oh yeah, you can, look at that. You can go two into 26, it's like a fraction, just simply reduce it down. Two into 26 makes you 13. See, we dropped the two, we dropped it all off the bottom, so we have 13, two. Now, see here, we worked only with the numbers outside. You can't do dividing into this two here, okay? So don't try that. Just on the numbers outside. Brought down to 13 radicand two. 
All right, this is number three. We have three over eight. And again, I wanna get the square of eight. You know, it's not real hard. I just multiply it. Multiply eight times eight is 64. Eight times three is three over eight. Is that difficult? Do you understand how we did that there? You don't, this is a radicon sign and this has no radicon sign, so you just multiply that. If it would have a radicon sign, which we have another problem over here that does, I'll show you how to do that. You multiply this radicon sign times this radicon, not times your whole number outside. Uh, so here we go, eight times eight is 64. And you have three here. Uh, you say, oh, I, 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 I reduce it down to eight. Three over eight, I'm done. Not quite. Uh, let me see here. How can I shrink this guy down? Mm, I'm going to have to back him up. There we go. Okay, I take this eight, and I bring him down to the bottom, and I get the square out of eight, which... It looks like you can't see that. There we go. Now you can. Eight here, I found the two, two, four. So now here I can take a square of two right out of here, and I left me with a two. So that's what I did here. I put a two in front, because I got a square out of there. I put a two in front here, and then I had a two left. Now I had two times three, so I multiplied that, and I got six. I still got my 8 on the bottom because I didn't do anything with this 8. Don't get confused here. I use this 8 here to square out or to pri find the primes. There we go. I'm using the wrong word. To find the prime numbers of them. And then I extracted one set of primes, one square, a 2. Multiply that together. So now I've got 6, 2 over 8. And here are the, the 6 over 8. I reduce that down to 3 over 4 and then two, so now it's in the lowest terms, it is three, four, with radicon sign two. Each time, you just keep taking a lower step, like here, you have to, you say eight is not as low, I can take a square out of eight to make it smaller. Okay, let's do five, yeah. I don't need my book. Uh, I think you start out with right here, 12, five, and 10. So again, you wanna get the square of 10. You square 10 times, or you multiply 10 times 10, gets you, oh, wait a minute, I said 10, there we go, I need my book. Gives me 100, and 10 times, I don't go 10 times 12 here, go 10 times five. So that leaves you with 50. And and 12 outside, yeah, you still move your 12 over. 12, right, and 50, and 100. Now you can square 100, and I jump back down to here, okay? So I squared 100 in my head, that's 10, and I got my 12, five. Now I took my 50 down here, and I got out my primes, which I had a two, and a five, and a five. So that's not real hard. I got the five right here, it is a double. So I put the five out here with the 12. Now remember, you don't add them, you have to multiply them together. So I got five times 12, and then I put my two. I had a two left here. I put that in the radicon sign here. Still got my 10 on the bottom. I come over, I multiply five times 12 is 60. I still got my two here. Didn't have to, didn't do anything with him. And I got 10. Now you can really shrink this guy down. 10 will go into 60 six times. So that automatically like erases a whole bottom number and equals six radicon two. Number five will work all the way down. You can break it all the way down the six rather than two. And there are a lot of others that you can do the same. I'll let you work on the rest of them. If you get stuck, uh, give me a call. Thank you.